Hello, my name is Alice Trindle and welcome to the art of developing a willing partnership. A Tip for the Ride is the title of a series of video blogs that we'll be producing to help aspiring horsemen and horsewomen to develop a deeper relationship with your horse. Exercises will vary from specific ground maneuvers that will help you in developing better horse handling skills to exercises that will put you in a perfect spot in the saddle, all focused on feel, timing, and balance in developing a deeper understanding of this magnificent animal, the horse. So grab a pencil, and probably a piece of paper would help too, and give yourself and the horse the next 10 minutes. We invite you to follow up with a view of the website where you'll find articles that accompany the principles that we're applying here in these videos. You'll also find a schedule of opportunities to be able to come ride with me and the TNT horsemanship theme. So here is your tip for the ride. This will be our first installment of Tip for the Ride and I'd like to go through a little bit here what we need as far as equipment. Tilly's being a perfect model for me today in that it may be very similar to this when you start with your horse on doing a round pin and square pin posturing for your lunge work for sending them on a circle and sending them on a square. It's been about two months since she's been handled and uh, the, her buddies are right outside, the wind's blowing and it'd be a good day to kind of ask her mind to come back to me and it may take a little bit to do that so hopefully it'll be a great example for you. The equipment we're using today is uh, a rope halter here that's really set up so that it could be used for a cavasson. You'll note that there's a three or four rose knots here on the, uh, on the nose. That gives me several places to be able to hook my 22 foot long ring rope in there. That's what I'm using for my lunge line today. Just have a simple little snaffle bit on and uh, I've tied my uh, halter rope up in a uh, cavalry type of knot here. And I'd like to get my reins up so that they'll be out of the way. So I'll just take a real simple little movement here. Let's see if we can send her on around one more time. I'll just reach underneath and put a couple of twists in my, my reins. Take my throat latch, run it through one of those loops and just put up nice and soft here. Want to be able to have some room so she can easily put her head down and easily gather up, put a few wrinkles here in her jowls area too. So let's get started with a little of this idea of round pinning or square pinning our horse when we're on the end of a lunge line. I'm going to start in more of a round pin type posture with that, my energy is projecting out here from my belly button and driving that front elbow, that front leg, about right where my girth would go, driving that up. I'm highly involved with it. As I walk my circle, my shoulders, my hips should do the same thing that the horse's shoulders and hips should be doing. I want that outside shoulder and hip to reach a little bit more, the inside to stay well underneath her. Picture it like she is on a railroad track and I'd like to have her outside feet um, front and hind on the outside of the track and the inside feet on the inside track. Notice here again I'd like to just keep her mind slightly tipped towards me. Not her whole body, not her shoulders coming in or coming out, but rather just following the arc of that railroad track circle that's around me. I'm involved in driving her up. Let's see if we could do a few transitions now that I'm beginning to have her mind back to me just a bit. I'm going to take a deep breath as if I were riding and encompass the horse in my mind, give her a little kiss and up we go into the trot. Notice here again, I'm the center of the wheel, my energy comes out on the spoke and the horse is on the very rim out there. Ideally, I would like to see this 
Red rope not get shorter or longer, but rather stayed at the same amount of tension all the way around. That would indicate that we are doing a pretty good circle. How do I do my downward transition? Deep breath and see if I could ask her to come down just a little bit. I might even shake my rope just a bit to make it a bit uncomfortable for her. Give her a little feel and a suggestion for her to bring her transition down in her my, my mind, in her mind, from a trot to a walk. I heard the difference between those two. I'm going to hear this difference now up into a trot. I'm going to hear a two beat rhythm. One, two, one, two, one, two, and breathe her up into that. Here we go. And trot. One, two, one, two, one, two, one, two, 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 two. I'm still the center of the circle here. Deep breath. Here, walk. That's like a four beat march. One, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four. I'm riding that right hind down to the ground. One, two, three, two, three, four, one, two, three, four. Very nice. Let's see if we could change now. And instead of going with me as the center, the hub of this wheel, I wonder if I could start square and take a couple of steps on a straight line. And another couple steps, a little deep breath or a half halt, a little deep breath and a half halt. You'll note that Tilly is starting to keep her shoulders up better as I do a square pen kind of a posture. She has more responsibility to be on a straight line out there. She's not relying on that hub, that spoke, leaning in on my wheel, she has to carry herself a little bit more. I'm going to turn, pivot, and go. Turn, pivot, go. Look, go. If I were riding, the posture would be the same. Turn my shoulders and torso to the new turn. Wait for the horse to balance up underneath me. Turn and wait. You'll notice that I have my lunge whip positioned a little different now than I did before. It's inside my hand as if it were a dressage whip. And the energy is really coming far behind the horse. It's not as if I'm pushing her forward, but rather that there'd be a big wave that's coming up behind her. And that's where the energy is coming, from much further behind. She has more responsibilities. Look, go. Look, go on the new line. Let's see how we could do a downward transition here. I'll bring my lunge whip underneath and ask her to stop in a slight shoulder in. I'd like to have her not come in quite so much, just stop with her shoulders slightly in towards me, not completely all the way in. Good. We'll take a moment here to readjust our lunge line. There's that nice wind coming up. I'll unsnap it from the left side of her body here. Put it over on the other side. And I think now that I probably have her warmed up a little bit, I could go ahead and hook this into the snaffle bit. Now note how I'm going to do that. I'm going to run this inside the ring of the snaffle bit up over her pole and then snap it in on the other side so that the side I'm working on is the same side that the lunge line is going to come out. So I'm going inside here, inside underneath the throat latch, up over the top, take my time to go to the other side, down inside the 
throat latch and snap that into the bit on this side. Now as I put a little down pressure here on the lens line, <laughs> it's actually going to lift up a little bit on the opposite side. We'll start with the same kind of principles. I'll start her on a round pen filling where my body is driving her up. She's relying much more on me rather than herself. And I'll keep my hand kind of low because I'm asking her to arch around that imaginary right leg as if I were on board to reach with that outside left front and come around me without coming off of the railroad track. Straighter on a circle. Now we'll change a little to the square pen. My lunge whip goes inside my hand. I get to walk a straight line, half halt, turn, go. Half halt, turn, go. Stay well ahead with my projection of my energy. Way out here. And again, way out in front of me. My energy comes out of my belly button. Hopefully my shoulders are back. My weight is balanced. It should feel very similar to the way it will feel up in the saddle. Notice how her mind is starting to come to me now. Without me having to pull or drive or push, she's beginning to keep her mind a little bit more here to the inside and find that nice straight track. She's still kind of thinking a little about her buddies who are on the outside here. But I can remind her with just a squeeze in my hand that she needs to keep her mind to the inside here. Thank you. Now we'll put her up into a little bit of a trot. I'll feel her up into that. Deep breath. My belt buckle comes up and drive her up here as if I were on board. Give her a little cue, a little kiss, and we'll go off on a trot. I can barely see her in my peripheral vision. My idea is not to stare at her, but to keep my energy well ahead so that she has to mark on where my shoulders are, where my hips are, very similar to if we were in the saddle. Downward transition, deep breath, good. And let's see if we can bring her to a halt here. I'll bring my lens whip and my other hand underneath and ask her to come to a halt without changing direction. So just a little bit too much of the shoulders coming in. Just want her to be able to find that spot with her shoulders slightly off the railroad track but still keeping a nice balance out there. Now I would not want to go ahead and lunge her right here. What's wrong with this whole picture? Well, you can see that the lunge line is coming out the opposite side. If I put pressure here, I'm going to send mixed messages down that line. So I really kind of like to not go ahead with this. I'm going to go ahead and interrupt and redirect and see if she can wait here for orders from headquarters. Purpose again of the round... <laughs> of the round pen or the square pen posture in your lunge work is to be able to get a hold of your horse's mind. It also gives you a good opportunity to be able to watch and feel for your horse, beginning to see for a nice balance. Are they not leaning in? Are they not leaning out? Are they tracking up on that nice railroad track? Is their mind with you? Is their body with you? Are they a relationship with you in balance? 